Hey everyone, I'm back. And yeah, the stream keeps disconnecting. It's super not fun. That's a thing we have to deal with, unfortunately. Also, hey Jago, welcome to the stream. And um, yeah, like I said, I'm super not sure on what I'm gonna be doing with this. This. With this jumping boy. I keep thinking something like a jumping pose with these legs kind of, kind of going on, something like this. Um, would have been fun, but I have no idea how to draw this. So, something like this might work. <clears throat> And you guys, um, you kind of reset it the modem, so hopefully the internet connections subside. But they might happen again if they do. I'm sorry, but there is very little I can do about that whole internet situation. But in case the disconnections keep happening, um, I'll keep waiting for internet to, to stabilize again and come back. But ideally, this stream will go for another four hours, so I hope you guys are uh, willing to put up with all the disconnections that may or may not keep happening till then. And then again, I'm, I have no idea what to do with this. With this. This, with this boy here, maybe I'll just give up on trying to do something too crazy and just go and draw him as a chill boy. Kind of just relaxing, kind of just laying down with his arms crossed behind his head. Being like, hey, I'm a, I'm a big boy. I'm a, I'm a good boy. I deserve, I deserve some rest. I can, I can, take a while to enjoy the day, the, the sun, the clouds, the, the everything. That's fun, isn't it? Being able to enjoy things. To take a while, to rest, do nothing, and just. Just enjoy the air. That's the kind of that's the kind of life all good boys and girls deserve. A life of chill. And sure thing, Sam. Have a great one. I will be here possibly when you come back. So I certainly will not be getting extra po points for poses and style, but uh, at least I'll be able to do the, the thing, the drawing. I think that that's enough, in a way. So uh, because of the whole my internet connection wasn't working, I may have missed a shitload of messages. So. If you guys did say something important or or something you wanted me to see, I will not have gotten those. So just letting you guys know, if I miss something, I'm not ignoring you. I just didn't see it at all. Uh, nobody said anything. That that's relaxing, that's fun to know. But uh, at least I didn't miss anything, so that's okay. So that's a that's a good thing. And I feel like this time I was also talking about something else, I don't I don't remember what. 
But um, the other time I was talking about the whole cr cream crackers with ketchup. And Neko, you talked about about tuna with ketchup. And I was thinking about it. Mm, uh, I don't remember what it was. <clears throat> One thing we used to do a while back was to get uh, can canned, canned sardines and mayonnaise and kind of just put both into a small small, a small plate or a big plate I know and just kind of mashing the two together with a the fork until you got a kind of a um, I don't know the name in English but you get a kind of a paste of fish a thicker paste of fish to put into sandwiches and stuff it was you know it was nice problem is you can only do that with fish and not everyone enjoys fish unless unless you guys are feeling like super brave and get that whole canned chicken and throw it in a blender and blend it in with mayonnaise then maybe maybe you can get something edible out of that and uh, Neku you do not judge do not judge you you're asking me not to judge you I also use you also used to eat rice beans and a stone all mixed up hmm I, I am I'm not even sure if that's a thing that should be a thing but I Hopefully, well, you're alive, so it definitely didn't kill you. But that's good to know. And who is committing those food crimes? Uh, an old friend of mine. He used to do that. He ate cream crackers with mayonnaise. Well, I mean, with ketchup, and then drink a whole can, a whole bottle of Coca-Cola. And whenever he didn't had ketchup or cream crackers. I don't even ask me how, but he would go and eat an entire can of condensed milk. And, and also drink a bottle of Coca-Cola. So it's like, oh, holy, shit, holy shit, how are you not dead yet? Because that's an, a humongous amount of sugar to be putting into your body. Like on, on an almost daily schedule that's just not healthy at all and popcorn and ketchup ew now come on the whole idea is to stop putting ketchup into things so let's not give anybody ideas of what they can put ketchup into I think the most radical ketchup thing I did was, was the putting ketchup on rice and I only had rice and maybe salad but I put ketchup to give it a little more taste but other, other than that I don't think I ever put any crazy ketchup experiments <laughs> I did however once for whatever reason drink a shot of vinegar so get a one of those shot glasses and vinegar and drink it up and it's not fun at all but uh, maybe do that someday you guys will be like holy shit why did I do that for I'm not gonna listen to those streamers anymore that's not fun I don't know maybe do that someday it's fun also hey Vito welcome to the stream it's kind of going slowly because the internet has been giving me random disconnections because it doesn't like me. And I'm drawing a big boy. I'm not still not sure how to draw this big boy or, or 
But those to use what situation he's in. I'm just trying to go with something familiar and with fun. And other than that, apparently have everyone here has been doing okay. Some met the weekend with different results. Some had good weekends, some had bad weekends, but they say it was good because nobody here likes being the the boy or the girl who says that they had a bad weekend. But nonetheless, I don't know very well how things are going, but apparently everyone here seems to be okay, or happy at least. So that's good, and that's what's up. So far, I mean, there's a, it, there's a lot that can happen in these next four hours. I mean, but hopefully nothing bad will happen, only good things will happen. But if bad things does happen, please do not look to me for support, because I'll be panicking. Also, Vito, that explains the ads you keep seeing. I don't know which ads you're talking about, but there might be ads. Twitch does have ads, so I don't know. Uh, also, hey, my cat, Twitch1, welcome to the stream. And uh, Chunky Peanut, you say that's such a nice big boy, and he is. And he's gonna get even bigger, maybe. Once I finish some of this. Parts. I, don't, I don't know. This is taking a time to become something, so whenever it does become something, hopefully it'll be a nice thing. Also, today, for whatever reason, I decided to give my music playlist a little change. So instead of the cafe jazz I've been playing up, up until now, the many sorts of cafe jazz. Today we're playing some swing jazz because I don't know things could 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 be a little more livelier. So let's let's skip dancing with this kind of music that's jamming. Also, it's a good music because I mean, good music, a, mu a good music for today because we're nearing the end of the month. It's almost, it's already the 29th, eventually it'll be February, and you know what that means, it means that one twelfth of the year has already gone by. How close are you guys to feeling or realizing your New Year's uh, promises, whatever. I forgot the word for the things you guys promised to do on New Year's. Um, I don't even... I, I actually don't remember. Not even in Portuguese, I don't remember. But anyway, those New Year promises things, how, how, how are you guys doing with them? Did you fulfill any of those yet? Also, <clears throat> Leo, you said I had to step out for a snack and a smoke, and welcome back. Things seems to be in more in order now. Um, Echo, it's resolutions. That's the word. Thank you. Uh, how are you, how are you guys' resolutions going? Has everybody here managed to win the two billion dollars? That's the lotto, or on the television shows like who wants to be a millionaire and the such. Or not, or are you guys are still not so close into, into, into getting your, what was the word, your resolutions? Are you guys are still not so super close into realizing your resolutions? Um, Diego, you said you are as close as the sun from Pluto. Huh, that's that close, huh? So if you see from a universal level, that's pretty close. If you see from a human perspective, that's super far. That's that's not super super. Well, could have been closer, but still. 
the the year is still long. We have lots of months to go yet, and and who knows? Maybe we'll, maybe we'll, maybe we'll get to it. Hopefully. And Vito, you didn't come up with any New Year's resolutions. It's like they say, why do this when you can live it? And I don't know. So what are you leaving then? If you're not planning any resolution so far. My only New Year's resolution, I think. I didn't even make it into a resolution. I was just like, hey, maybe I should try and do this more this year. Well, it's true, go out more. And by go out more, I mean go out for walkies. Like, get out every other day, walk for an hour or so. And develop more healthy habits, because... Because lately I've been realizing that a lot of my family members, they've been... They've been not in the best health situation. And eventually you start to realize it. You're not invincible. You as soon as you get into your later years, you are gonna have a lot of health issues and problems and you can avoid them. If you start to exercise more regularly and keep up in shape and live a healthier life. Even if you don't, and I haven't, then you're going to face a lot of health issues down the line. And I don't think I have any health issues yet, but I will begin to have if I don't change my habits. So yeah, that's what I've been thinking about. We'll be trying to be a little more healthier this year. That's all in the next couple dozens of years I can remain being healthy. So other than that, my only other resolution, which wasn't really a resolution, was to start doing these streams and finish most of my commissions and sketches and things I have left to do. Um, the streams are uh, definitely helping because, like I said many times, you guys being here watching me do this makes sure that I don't slack off because nobody's watching me. So yeah, you guys are helping me not slack off and it's helping me keep up with one of my resolutions that isn't a resolution, it's just uh, hey, I gotta do it, I gotta do this thing. Okay, so I'm gonna erase this arm real quick because it's not helping with the whole perspective. Because when you draw big boys, you need to keep the proportions in check, or else you'll risk getting really weird results. Like, I'm already getting those weird results, and I haven't even began the, the drawing, kind of. Also, these musics, they kind of do sound like they fall out some track every now and then. So maybe they're wrong or something. I don't know if any of you guys have ever played Fallout 3 or 4 or New Vegas, but if you have, they have a soundtrack that sounds very close to this one. And I like that. They're fun. Lots of uh, 40s and 50s music. Some jazz, some other types of jazz. And 
and some pop music from the era, which... Well, I guess it is was what, what, what... This is what was popular back in those days. So, what a lovely, lively music. Of things... Uh, going on on the whole... Saxophone. I don't think after that year they kept doing so many music songs, I mean, with uh, saxophones and these other sort of instruments they used back then. Maybe they did, because the song, the, the songs, they sound so much like the. like the. One of the music for the the mask movie that from the 90 something? 98 maybe? 97, 98 with uh, Jim Carrey. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. But there is a mask movie and it was super fun and there was a music like this. Like this. And the music and the movie isn't that old, so. People are still probably doing music like this, even up to this day. So, are you guys bored yet? Because I don't know, the chat seems quite, quite slow today. Maybe I need to go and turn up the music with some crazy, crazy shenanigans. Or just, I don't know, see what I can do to make things more exciting, more lively. So this is looking at the camera, the viewer rather, that's when you talked about illustrations um, using a term like camera is kind of iffy because sometimes it's not a camera you're trying to represent, sometimes it's a viewer, this is the word I'm looking for, viewer. Well, then again, in movies and the such, you are sometimes trying to represent a camera, which is supposed to be like the omniscient narrator in books, someone who sees everything from above and has a lot of knowledge of what's going on. But sometimes you want to represent things from some somebody else's perspective, someone who's on the floor, someone who's trying to relate. And then you want your camera to be lower, kind of on the same level as the character, because you want to feel like you're on the same level as him or her, and relate. So when you do this, when you do that, we don't, we are not trying to think of the camera as a camera, but rather as a viewer. Same thing with illustrations. If we do stuff with some sort of deformation like the fish eye lenses or what then yeah we are thinking about camera if we are thinking about character level uh, placement and view and whatnot then we are not thinking about a camera we are thinking about a viewer so in this case I think this could be a viewer. So when I say his, his should be looking at the viewer, I also mean the camera, but in this case the camera is the point at which the viewer would be looking if he was inside his world of this character here. Um, 
Mercat, you ask, when is the next part of the Comi Daddy coming? And... Vito, don't you mean Call Me Father? Uh, yes. Um, it's coming Friday. Every new Friday I... Every new Friday I post up a new page. So far the, the new pages are only on Patreon. So you guys can go over Patreon and... And read it. But so far they are Patreon exclusives. So you have to be my Patreon in order to read the comics. Uh, for as little as five dollars a month you can become my patron and read the comic. And more than now, more than more than that, you will be supporting me with this whole comic making endeavors. But for free on for Infinity, so free and Tumblr and all the other places. I don't know, it might be coming out. Uh, I don't have a calendar on me, let me see. Today is the 29th. This Friday will be the 2nd of February. So who knows, maybe this week or next week? Maybe sometime in February? I kinda wanted to have more pages ready before I start to release this new comic. So I don't know. I can give a, a precise date, but real soon, hopefully. Because another thing I've been wanting to do this year with the resolutions and the such was to try and do two, two comic pages per week. But as we have seen so far, that's kind of a not realistic. Um, that's a not realistic goal, I can't do that. Unless I worked way more time than I actually already do work on illustrations. It is possible, but not on with my current time frames, my current schedules. If I were to change my schedules, I could do that. So I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of complicated. Uh, what else are you guys talking about? Mercat, you keep you really liking the fox guy. I keep forgetting his name, and it, it's like Vito said, it's Gavin. And Sam, welcome back. Yeah, I, I think it. Most of you have already read the Comi Daddy comic. This new, as you probably know the premise. For those of you who haven't, I'll give you guys a quick rundown of what that comic was about. It was this this guy Nathan? He he's kind of having issues. Uh, personal issues with socializing and anxiety and the such and he goes to see a shrink and his shrink pretty much tells him hey maybe you should write out write down what you're feeling and what you're going through and and if you have any sexual experiences write them down as well that ought to be good for you and then he decides to go and do that Although, instead of writing his own sexual adventures and experiences, he goes and writes his friend's uh, sexual experiences. And that's what the comic is. It's his friend's uh, sexual experiences and how he dealt with it, and the friends pretty much just talking about it and being like, whoa. That was that was weird, but we get it. I mean, crazy stuff happens all the time, and and that was the premise for the first comic. It's it's Nathan. He meets with his friends Bradley and Gavin, 
Bradley tells his story, and now, for the sequel, Call Me Father, it's uh, Gavin's time to tell a history, and Nathan is going to write that down as well. So that's the premise of the comic so far. And as you guys may have guessed it, it's supposed to be a three-part or maybe four-part comic. So there's more coming out, even after, even after Call Me Father is done and over. Also, hey, Taz Bingo, welcome to the welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Mm. I, keep, I keep having this feeling that this face might not be in the right place. Maybe if I move it down a bit. I, I keep wondering. It just doesn't look too right. And after a while, we start getting this it doesn't look right kind of vibe when things don't look right. However, I haven't many ideas on how to fix it so far, so instead of trying to figure out what's wrong and fixing it, I'll try and finish it. Because even though it feels wrong, I might be able to find out what's wrong with it and possibly fix it during the process. If I don't stop, if I just keep going, <coughs> that's definitely not the best way to go about this, but it is a way. So let's go with that. Because it would also be very boring for you guys to watch me kind of just stare at the screen and think, hmm, this, is, this doesn't look right. Maybe I can increase his eye size. That could do something. Maybe. I'm so sure about this. Also, I have to make his gaze kind of point upwards a little bit more. Upwards and to the right a little bit. Kind of like here. And so he's looking at the viewer. Like we discussed just a while ago. Something like this. You know, we raise his eyebrows a little bit, just so he's showing kind of a surprised look. And we put on a big old goof smile in his face. Because he's a happy boy. He's happy to be here. Also, when you're putting in too big a smile on someone's faces, you will want to, to make a curve, like close the lower eyelid a little bit because of the whole cheek movement as it goes up, because of the smile. Uh, Merkad. Oh, I hope we see more of the guys from Call Me Father comic, I really like anime. And yeah, we will be seeing everyone a little bit more. Um, yeah, like I said, I don't have a date yet for when I'm gonna start to show it, to post it online for free. But it'll happen, and soon. Right now. So, I take it we are not talking about food anymore, so what were, what are we talking about? I think we could talk about not politics, because if we talk about politics I'm gonna be left out, because I know nothing about politics. Unless you guys wanna talk about politics, then I can impress everyone with how little I know about the world. 
the role of politics. Maybe though we can talk about the WTFF trader. Like I said, he has a lot of weird factoids about random stuff. And I don't know, maybe maybe we can talk a little about it. Because like I said, it's not it's not the most important things in the world, but it's a very it's a very random topics at most times and they are great conversation starters. So maybe you can use those. So let me do that because we all could use a little more fun in our lives. And um, that's what the effect. There we go. And Vero, you said you like Nathan. You can relate to him. Introvert, complications with socializing. We'll definitely hang out with him. And Nathan, Nathan is a Nathan's a great guy. Leo, you said the USA politics suck. It's just like a clock that refuses to flush. And that's. That's not, not super fun. But hey, look at here, we have already our first fact. Uh, I don't know if that's a good one. But let's, let, let's talk about it. Uh, okay, here we go. Our first topic for the day on the amazing WTF facts is this one when Apollo 11 landed it only had it had only about 25 seconds of fuel left so that's an interesting fact I don't know if that's helpful or anything but uh, now you guys know a new, a new thing so what, what do you guys think of it I don't even know when this whole thing happened. When was it? I think it was the early 90s or late 90s like, or 80s even. I don't know. When was it? But I think it was something around in either 90, 92, 3 or 87 I don't I don't think it was true no I don't think it was true late I mean true true long ago I think it was kind of closer but anyway <clears throat> uh, you said it was 1969 that's way longer ago than I thought it would have been that's quite some time, in fact. But, uh, well, that's fun to know. Especially to know that people were able to send a huge amount of mass to the moon and even people when they had when they had computers with much less computing capabilities than the cell phones we have in our hands nowadays. So, that's fun. <coughs> but in any case, crazy as it may seem, uh, this whole landing with little fuel left isn't that crazy that crazy of a fact actually because when you think about it fuel also has weight and you can't take extra fuel because it will weight you down the, sh the whole spaceship or rocket or whatever and if it weighs you down you need more fuel to you will need more fuel to 
to make it lift and then you enter an endless loop of you need more fuel to be able to lift off the extra weight and eventually you have so much weight that you have but you need an extra rocket and the extra rocket you need more even more fuel so so uh, it's actually a good thing that they were able to calculate these things down to so so little numbers I mean it doesn't give them a lot of room in case of errors happen or something they didn't foresee but it's super interesting because if they did take more fuel they may not have been even a they may not even be in a position to be able to lift off. In case any of, you, any of you want to try your hands at that, there is an amazing computer game called Kerbal Space Program and basically what you do is try to send little green men to the moon, the Kerbals. Actually not the moon, but the whole Kerbal uh, solar system. You are trying to get them to go to their moon and the other planets, and it's uh, they have pretty accurate physics, physics simulation, physics, gravity, and all that, and it's really not easy because you have to do all those mental calculations of hey, do I have enough rocket power to lift off this? however many tons rocket into space am I taking enough fuel if I get more fuel it'll, it'll weigh me down and all those all those things they are real things and they are pretty well simulated in that game it's not it's not a light game like a weekend hey I'm just gonna have fun kind of game it's something that you need to be kind of into the hard sides of physics and mathematics to to enjoy on some levels or you play with the unlimited amount of money and savings and time control things turned on if you just want to have fun and send your space all sorts of dedos shaped rockets it's fun <clears throat> uh, a video you asked was it Apollo 11 that I showed you guys or Apollo 4 13? I don't know, it was Apollo. Just let me find it. Apollo 11. You know how those two differ, but it's the 11. And Sam, it looks like we will have to say farewell. This was a great stream so far, so keep up. Let's meet again. And uh, sure thing, see you later, Sam. Sorry, I kept on babbling about space and, space and rockets and the such, and they didn't see your message. But uh, sure, have a, have a great day. And take care. So, I'm still trying to figure out how to do this big boy. I'm not so sure about this whole pose anymore, but I'm gonna go with it because I've already taken too much time. And I think I might even go and color this one because I mean I have the time. And I don't think I'll be able to do another sketch after this one, so I'm just gonna take my time, color this one, and get on with it. Hopefully you guys don't mind that I don't do a second drawing today. So let me open again the reference because I think this big boy is a very very fluffy boy, so I need to try and do the neck fluff as accurately as I can because he's if you guys seen the the the, the 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 reference I got from Google, this dog breed has a lot of fluff on their necks and body and the such and everywhere. 
They're very big fluffy boys. So I think the, in this pose he's doing, he's also he's kind of lounging down, he's relaxing on the ground. So maybe I'll also make it so he's looking a little bit more relaxed. So I'm gonna draw in some eyelids here and there. Also, Chunky Peanut, it's not a Chow Chow, it's a. Let me see, what was it again? A. Caucasian Wolf Shepka. Apparently, it's a kind of a Russian Shepka, sort of. Not super sure, but it seems to be the case. <clears throat> and thank you, Vito. Um, I have a reference picture here, just let me find it and open it real quickly. Hide this one and open it here. It's a very big fluffy dog and he has kind of a short muzzle, he, he actually does look like a Shao Shao kind of, but he's not. So let's keep going with this cute, cute fluffy boy on the right layer though. Let's do it. And Neku, you want to see a... Uh, a persona of an also. I th these do have an um, English name. I forgot what what was it. I think it's Cougar, maybe. I'm not super sure, but there is an English name for that species, kind of. And there is a guy with a persona like that. I think it's uh, Mark Nelson. I don't know if you're familiar with him. He also goes by El Rano every now and then. I think he was in BFF as well, so you probably have seen the guy. You may not have talked to him, but you have seen the guy, definitely. And <clears throat> And Chow Chow with a purple tongue, with purple tongues. Are you talking about someone specific? Because there is a person with a very specific uh, description. And you only know like five people from the from the Brazilian fandom. And well, he's he's a very popular artist of a sort, so a lot of people know him. He has a, a, a cougar, puma, you know, uh, persona. I don't know, I thought that maybe you would have been. If you, look, if you looked him up, you probably would find it. It isn't super rare though, there might be some people here and there supporting that kind of persona, so you just have to find it. Those are the shiny Pokemons of the Brazilian fandom. And they exist. Okay, so there is this guy, he's chilling here, relaxing, having a great time. I'm gonna do his hair. And now I don't know, because his reference kind of shows him with a toque. Um, but I don't think I'll draw it, I'll just do a uh, no, okay random hair. Just because. Just, just, just because. Because it's fun. Okay. <clears throat> and even though you want to meet more people, just have a few friends, it sucks to be honest. Says Neku. And well, now you have a uh, lot of new friends in here. There's the the beautiful boys and girls in here. They're super, they're super cool dudes and dudettes, and they are possibly all looking to make new friends in here. So there's all of us already whom you call whom you can call friends. 
Other than other than we, there's also all sorts of people to meet in BFF next in the next time we go. Other than that, well, then you're gonna have to do some old-fashioned, old-fashioned me meeting with people, and meeting friends of friends, and get the ball rolling. It's not easy. It's not always fun, but it works. Okay, so. I think I'm finally done with the head, so I can get to the rest of the body. So let's try and figure out this whole arm situation he has going on. Because I had drawn this arm before, just kind of erase it. I wanted to figure it out a little better. Now I think I can. I have the. I have what I need. I just need to. Just need to first draw his arm in here, because I want I, I want his forearm sort of or lower arm. I don't even know. I want his arm to be kind of covering his head, sort of his laying down in bed, napping, and blocking the sun with his or not the sun, but his, the light with his arm. And since this is the is the important part, I'm gonna try and figure this one out first. Then I can draw the rest of the arm and see where it connects on the rest of the body. Before I do this, there's, n there's not even why I bother going on with the rest of the body. Entirely, Butch, uh, sorry for not being entirely here. You keep coming and leaving since there is some family coming and talking to me, and that's okay. But you're enjoying seeing the progress of the drawing, and I'm glad you are. Um, if there's anything you wanna ask about um, about the process, why I'm doing things the way I'm doing, or something like that, you can always ask. I'd, I'd be super glad to answer any questions you have art related. If not, uh, I hope you will, I hope you have a great time. In, in any case, of just seeing the 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 art, the illustration being done. And sketched out and everything. Uh, Neku, you don't think you will go to BFF again? It was nice to make some friends, but you're not that into the Brazilian fandom to go again. You'd rather meet up, like go meet a person. And oh well, yeah, that's that's uh, that's a good way too, and even cheaper in a way. But I don't know. I just, I just I decided because it's it's a, a big event with lots of people. But then again, I don't think people go to these events to meet new people. They mostly go with the people they already know and go to meet people they already know online and are using the event as an excuse to meet them in real life. So yeah, I. So yeah, maybe it's not the best place to meet new people, but it works. Other than that, mm, there's a... I don't know, maybe there's those, uh, those bowling events that keep happening over there. Maybe you can go to one of them. There's a lot of, lots of nice new people you can meet in there. And that aside, I don't know. Maybe there's some. I don't know how keen you are on getting into online groups, but there is a lot of online groups for furries. You can join one of them and talk to, to people. And eventually, you meet someone whom you will like and become friends with. And uh, maybe you also meet someone whom you hate and become enemies with. That's also a possibility. But nonetheless, it's a great, convenient way to make new, new friends. And yeah, Chandler, it is a very thick boy. A very thick and a very good boy. 
And Terry, you will ask if you do have questions. I'm sure thing. I'll be ready to answer them. I'll keep humming and thinking loudly about it though. So the whole thing about being ready is a lie. I will not be ready. If you ask me questions, I will panic. I will try to answer them though. So. <clears throat> I, mm, I'm pondering wondering here how what people do with their hands when they are trying to block light. I, I don't know how it looks from this position, from this pose, so I'm gonna try to get a little creative here. By creative I mean sketch. Sketch the shit out of it. You know, until I'm more or less satisfied with the way this thing is looking. And then I say, okay, this is good, good enough. Let's keep going. So far it isn't, so let's keep doing this whole sketch. Uh, when it comes to hands, there is a... I probably have talked about this already. There is a artist, Fiona Staples. She does awesome hands because she doesn't lose time trying to define every single finger and every single phalange, if that is the word in English, for the fingers. She just kind of makes a little quick silhouette that suggests a few fingers and then she says, okay, done. And, and that's it. And I love the way she does hands because they look so convincing and yet they are so simple when you break it down artistically and when you do comics that's what you want you want something that looks convincing um, but it's quick and easy to do because you'll be doing that a shitload of times throughout the comic so you don't want to you don't want to lose too much time doing hands doing hair Doing all sorts of stuff in comic. So many artists came come up with different ways of doing things, and I really enjoy the way she does. It's super fun, and you guys should really look into it. Uh, she illustrates two comics nowadays, I think. I mean, only one, truly. She illustrates a uh, saga. An amazing space opera comics you guys have to, to read because I love it and I'm recommending it to you guys so get to it. And uh, I don't think she illustrates any other comic like regularly. She does one offs every here, every now and then. She did, she does covers, she illustrated the like the couple first. Issues of the new Archie comic, and I don't know what else, but she, I think she also illustrated a, qu a quick short uh, comic thing for a TV series about pirates. I don't remember the name, maybe Black Sails. I think uh, it's a short four pages long comic she did, but. It was also great. And yeah, give, give a look at her stuff whenever you can. Because it's worth it. I, I mean, it, it, it is. <clears throat> Dude with his arms behind their heads or up are your weakness. What, I, or what am I doing to you? And right now I'm trying to convince you that I'm a good illustrator. Good enough, it, so you should give me money, that's what I'm trying to do. And... Uh, Chandler, you have an art question. Face reveal when? And which face are you talking about? Which, which, which face? Mm -hmm. 
Which is also an interesting thing that you guys would ask this of me. Uh, I think you guys are possibly, probably, hopefully, familiar with um, a computer program called Face Rig. It's a program that capture that uses your your webcam to look into your face and capture certain uh, use face recognition <coughs> and tries to transfer it to a 3D model of a character. So those of you who have seen possibly have seen streamers and whoever on the internet with that panda or the or the bear or the wolf characters going around using face rig. I think you guys may have seen one or two or ten of these people doing those. Uh, Neku, you said, but the commission you have from me is always in computer side because it's a badge now. If you want it, I'm super glad you do. I don't know if everyone who buys commissions from me feels honored, but I'm, I'm really glad you do. And Chandler, the dog face. And who knows, maybe someday. <laughs> because I'm not super eager to do that. Also, you're using it as your Twitch icon, and that's, that's super fun. And Chandler, you've used Face Rigger when it was in, when it was in beta. And I tried it, I bought it, I think it was the first thing I ever bought on Kickstarter. First and only, actually. And I, I enjoy it, I think it's super fun. I decided, uh, when I came here to do the streams, I said, hey, maybe, maybe I'll use Face Rig. But I looked into it and I was super sad and downcast because I don't have uh, German Shepherd boys in there, so I didn't feel represented. I, I don't have a way to show to, to use it with me. It was super sad. Now. But normally, when I become a sad boy because of these things, I go around and say, "What can I do to solve this issue?" Because now it's an issue. And. I looked into it, and all I, can, all I can do really is go and learn how to 3D model, 3D model myself and my dog itself actually, and then learn how to rig it and pose it in a program and do a little the an animated dot that I can use. So I can do that, or I can do the other thing. Because apparently the uh, face rig came up recently with a thing called Live 2D plugin. Live 2D is a software that allows you to take 2D images and and kind of wrap and shrink and transform them in a way that gives you the illusion of movement. And you can animate it, the shit out of it. So uh, apparently, I can try and illustrate myself in 2D or do just a normal illustration and then import it into Face Rig and have Face Rig uh, show the 2D dog and use it here instead of a face cam. So we can, I could try and go and do that and have an animated dog. So things would look more doggish and cool and doggish. So I decided to go and try and do it. Thing is, I have never done anything of the sort and Live 2D does not seem like an easy program. So I'm trying to figure the whole thing out. But eventually, hopefully, luckily, I'll be able to do it. And if I am, I'll be coming up eventually with a movable little face cam me 
Uh, the, the moves around and, and do it and, and does the things. So hopefully that'll be fun. I hope you guys are up for that. <clears throat> Um, Chandler, you said you're sure there's a way to mod the wolf into a German Shepherd boy. Uh, there are kind of is ways to do that. I can, well, I can actually export the model. So far, I don't think it's a possibility. I don't think the program allows you to do that. Export the models that it already has and mod them. Um, Maybe I can find it. I think there is a way. So yes, I can either go and find the model, find the model of the wolf, try to mod it somehow, then go and retexture it into making it look more German Shepherd-like. I did look into that, and it does seem doable, but it does seem to be kind of hard still. Besides, there's two wolves. There's the feral wolf and he looks kind of... It, look, it looks okay, but he looks too wolfish. And then there is the antro wolf. And he's okay, but he has this jacket and bracelet that are part of the model. I can't remove them, even if I want to. So the only workaround into that is going and modding the, the whole model thing. And like I said, I don't know how to treat the model, rig, and whatnot. So it is doable, but it is super, super out of out of my expertise. So I need to go and learn how to do all those things beforehand. So yeah. That's the downside of not having a wolf for some, I guess. I have to go and do and work around that limitation. Uh, Neku. I don't I don't get what you said. I think it's supposed to be a joke or a meme or something. But like I said, I'm not a memester guy, so I'm at a loss and I'm completely and totally confused. Sorry. And Chandler, how did you come up to like German Shepherd boys the most? I don't know. Um, I just woke up one day and said, hey, that, that shit looks dope, and that's pretty much it. There might, there might be some ins and outs or very specific things about it, but I don't know. From all the dog breeds out there, this is the one that felt the rightest to me. I don't know why. I think it's because they're brown, mostly. Brown and yellow. And that's the closest to orange a dog can get, I think. And I don't know, growing up here, I did get to see a lot of German Shepherds every now and then. Like Huskies, they're none. You don't see Huskies in here. And yeah, I don't know. That's how it came to be, so hooray. And Neku, look at up look at her arm. Look at the up arm and all the biceps and be right back, you're dying. Don't die. And there is this channel called Treat the News where they are face where they use face rig to tell the news. And I did not know about that. But apparently that sounds awesome. Kind of. Kind of sounds awesome. It might not be super awesome, but it looks like it looks interesting. Sounds interesting. Possibly is interesting as well. 
Chandler, you're weak as fuck, why that? Memes equals the meme of life, Kappa. Uh, is this my favorite animal? I don't know if it is. If I, I can't really say if it is my favorite animal, but it's definitely like the top three or two. And Vito said German Shepherds are always awesome, and that they are. They're super awesome and super, super cool. And according to, to the statistics, they are responsible for. They are the top responsible breed for attack on humans. So when people say that pit bulls and other dog breeds are the most violent dogs, they, they don't think about the German Shepherds, they are the most violent apparently for some reason. And Chandler said Boston Creamfield Donut. Hooray for those! You guys, though, you guys are being super, super silly. However, despite your your whole silliness, it does seem like you guys are super friends now, so that's cool. I mean, I'm, I'm glad to see you guys are getting along so well. And this is the complicated part because I don't know how bodies work so yeah I don't know what to do here really like there should be a shoulder here I think maybe perhaps hopefully eh. let's try and keep working my way out up and down and around and maybe just maybe I can come to look as if I actually know what I'm doing I don't think it would come to that you guys will see through me and instantly shout hey you don't know what you're doing you don't know anatomy what are you doing get out of there and then I'll be replaced and you guys will get another artist dog to come and draw things So uh, yeah, so far I'm trying to fake it. Hopefully I'm doing a okay job. Hopefully. Maybe. Let's get back to it though. The eyes. I still feel like the eyes could use a little little more work on that. I don't know how though. Hmm. Maybe if I raise more, a little bit more the eyebrows and close a little bit the upper eyelids, I can give it a, a, a feel that he's, he's more chill, more relaxed. I'm kind of almost sleepy. And to make his smile brighter. Brighter as in give a little more emphasis on it. <clears throat> and Echo, you do too much not safe for work jokes for someone who is rather naive when it comes to stuff. Oh no, just like everyone else. And Chandler, I'm pretty sure they are the most violent because the police force uses them. They are the Outlier for sure. I don't know what outlier means. Uh, Leo, breed of dogs are only as violent as they are raised to be. Any breed of dog can be raised to be mean or nice. Chandler, you said no chihuahuas are just Satan incarnate, and I agree with you. The smallest the dog, the smallest the dog, the, the weirdest, the more angry filled they are. I don't know why, I wonder. It has to be something like the shorter the dog is, the closer to hell they are. 
or some kind of weird physics mechanics stuff like that. Or I don't know. It's just, it's just weird, weird altogether. <clears throat> uh, Neko, you said the them pets, them lifted arms, then everything. Nice job, Kim. Uh, thank you. I still don't like the eyes, but I think it's turning out okay. And thank you for agreeing with me and saying that I am actually doing a good job. Glad you trust my skills so much. So dang, watch there much. There we go, just a little cover up of the handses. These tiny, tiny handses of this big, big boy need to be covered. <clears throat> and he isn't at all. He isn't. Uh, Chandler, you said I am. I am. Not, I am not naive. And, ah, yeah, that's what Ch King uh, uh, Neko is referring to, saying that I'm not naive. You guys are calling me a very naughty boy. Why do you Why do you be so mean to me? All I've done is draw a little, not a little actually, but I, all I have done is draw some penises here and there. I'm a very big and burly and sweaty and fuzzy man, doing all sorts of of physical body contact with other big burly men, males rather. Why do you judge me so? Why do you call me not naive? What have I done? I, I did my best to be a good boy. And... Chandler said that I am a good boy. Alright, I'm glad you think so. Uh, an outlier is a statistical term that refers to the data that is so far away from the average of the majority of the data that it causes a problematic misrepresentation of the truth when it's plotted on a graph, and I have a very nice story about that. Terry, am I using another imager or another screen to help me draw the body posture? I'm not, I'm doing it from head. Because I'm a very good boy. Uh, I mean, for the muscles and all, or is memory and knowledge? It is a lot of an anatomy knowledge and muscle knowledge. So when I go and keep telling you guys, do study anatomy, it's good for you. I'm not joking. Do go and study anatomy because it is important as shit. And you guys should not be skipping on it. Also, hey Fonzer, welcome to the stream. So glad to see you again, you, to see you joining us. Today, especially today of all days. It's, uh, it's a Monday, uh, the 29th day of the month. And it's a very special day. I don't know why, but hopefully you, Fonzer, can tell us why it is a special day. Since you do know all about dates and the such. And Vito, you said Doug is not a naughty boy. They don't call the chain erotic for nothing, so it's normal. And well, come on, I I kind of am kind of a naughty boy sometimes. When it comes to drawing, because I do all sort of naughty, very naughty tricks. Such as not drawing fingers correctly and skipping on certain parts and using Ctrl Z. Those are not tricks artists should be using so often as I do. Which makes me a very naughty boy. It could be worse. It could be very worse. Chandler said that figure drawing is literally the most important thing in drawing. If you can get good at the human form, everything else is learned much, much quicker from the knowledge you've accumulated thus far. 
I agree. Once you do learn how the human bodies work and are and the anatomy and the such, everything else becomes a piece of cake when it comes to drawing. So, if you know anatomy or good enough anatomy, well dang, you're set for life, you can draw anything. Good job, you did it. You became Bob Ross. And Fonzer, you said it's National Puzzle Day. And see, I knew I could rely on you to get the information on the dates. So, hooray everyone! Happy National Puzzle Day for you guys who are in the same country as Fonzie. Because... Well, hopefully if people are in the know, they'll be offering very big discounts on puzzle games, such as Portal or Jigsaw. So yeah, go to your local board game store if that is a thing. Go to whatever place you go to buy toys and whatever and buy a shitload of Jigsaw puzzles and mail them to me because I want a Jigsaw puzzle to, to, to complete and hang on the wall when all the things. <clears throat> and also Chandler, I did say Z because I don't know. When I say Z, it doesn't doesn't sit too right in my mouth. I don't know why. I think it's because I get confused with all the. It feels confusing to me. So yeah, saying Z is more makes more sense, especially because no, no, it, it just feels right. So you have to deal with it. Sorry about that. Um, Kaze, will you look at this? You slept for a 30 minute nap and woke up after one hour and 30 minutes. So you did discover the secret of time travel. It's napping. Napping is a secret to, to, to time travel. Although, to be fair, I have figured that out many, many years ago, so... Sorry, you're not the first one to figure that one out. I mean, you're not the first one to figure that one out. But you did figure it out on your own, so congratulations, Kaze. And... Diego. And suddenly you don't even know what day it is. And yeah, that's a thing. Especially if you go to sleep when the sun is up and wake up when the sun is down, then you that's when you get in panic. And if that and if you do that but on some on somebody else's house. Do that else. If you go to sleep when the sun is up and someone someone else's house and you wake up when the sun is down, you get freaked out like nothing else. Get super spooked. Chandler, you know, the United States is literally the only place that says Z. And in Portuguese we say Z, but there is an accent going on. And that's what helps me get okay with it, but uh, when it goes through English to say Z, it sounds like B, and I, I, I don't like it. <clears throat> and you love a good Jeep. So, hooray! Also, going back to the whole whatever skidever you said about statistics, there is a fun, fun story. I list I heard once in a statistics statistics class I took uh, uh, more than a year ago now, back in college. Um, that they got to see the average wage for many professions and they did find out that like this is back in the 90s 80s they did find out that geologists and people who were graduated in geography those guys for whatever reason were like the third or second most well-paid professions of all time and people taking these statistics were nuts because they said, whoa, holy shit, what am, I, what am I doing with my life? Why are the geographies being paid so much? 
So suddenly they started to reanalyze the data and they found out they had one of those things you guys said, I don't remember the word, but is um, they didn't find out that geographists were making so much money because they took into account everybody who had graduated as in geography and calculated their nowadays wage. However, there is a basketball player, I think Michael Jordan, he did graduate in geography in college. However, he was the most popular basketball player for quite some time. So his wage was not of a geographist, his wage was of a basketball player. But because the statistic people didn't know what they were doing, their whole graph or data got really wonky because of that. So eventually they realized that that thing exists. The word just said that influences the, the outlier, outlier. And they decided, hey, this is the thing, let's be aware of this in the future. And they did, and everyone lived happily ever after. Until somebody committed the same mistake again years later. And they said, hey, maybe that's the thing we should look into. And then the cycle repeated. And mind blown, says Kaze. Uh, Diego, you said the H. We say H in Portuguese. <clears throat> so yeah, we. That's weird too. I don't. I don't even know why you guys say say, say H because it sounds a lot like the number eight for my liking, and it confuses the shit out of me. So, why do you guys do this? Why? I'm gonna, I'm, as, as I know that you, you guys who are watching me, who are Native Americans, I mean, not a neighbor, Native American, but uh, people from the United States, I know you guys have nothing to do with this, but I'm gonna complain directly to you. Why do you do this? Why do you make English be so crazy complicated and have confusing words? It's not good. It's not good for my for my confused dog head. And Joe, you also said why is why why I don't even know. Uh, why is said like why? I think it is. So why is why like this? We say y. And why do you say also the other letter that is super crazy is W? Because it do say it's a double U, but it's actually a double V. So what the, what the heck? What what are you guys going going on about? Why, why why do you keep trying to to screw with us foreigners? That's making me a very sad boy. <clears throat> uh, Chandler's makes it all the more impressive that you mastered it. I have not mastered it at all. Nobody have mastered this. Leo, you said homophones are a type of... Uh, okay, let's focus. This is a hard one. Homophones are a type of hormone. That also sounds alike and have different meanings, but have different spellings. Homographs are words that are spelled the same, but have different meanings. Huh. Okay, let's read that one again. Homophones are a type of hymen, hymonym that also sounds alike and have different meanings. So, home. Homophones are words that sound alike and have different meanings, but have different spellings. What? Anyway, that's the thing. You guys should also, when you're done studying anatomy, you should go into Wikipedia and look that up and learn about that too.
And then you'll be smarter boys and girls, so that that's good. Chandler, you said that your favorite homograph in, in English is red. Which tense is the next sentence in? I read. And yeah, somebody was talking to me. Not like they're, they were trying to teach me the difference between I read and I read. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold the fuck up. Hold the fuck up. What? And you also lost Diego at homophones. Mm, Fonzer, I agree with you, you guys are making me struggle with this whole talk of languages. And Diego said we have one here, Forma. It, it can be either shape or a form that is used to shape something. And we also have a lot of others, other ones, like ponto. Ponto can mean dot, it can mean stop, it can mean uh, it can score, it can mean a shitload of stuff. Uh, Leo, even Americans have trouble with such things about their own language. Chandler, it says that to read is a lovely irregular that shares its past tense with its present form. Uh, Neku gives another example because ponto can also mean stitches. It means all this other thing. And Diego says no, lol, well, lol, not the ponto. I'll, I'll blow you guys' heads with that one. So, due to popular demand, I will not keep talking about how Ponto can mean like 8 or 10 different things. And I'll leave you guys to not be mind blown today. Because the week has just begun, it's way too early for, for us to be blowing everyone's minds already. Maybe by Thursday or Friday. Maybe by then it's time. We'll be, we'll, we'll be looking into a weekend and maybe we can get our minds blown. But blowing everyone's mind on a Monday is not a good way to start a week. <clears throat> and Chandler is said true as fuck. Ambiguous words and, se and sentences doesn't discriminate. And Neck you said score is also Ponto. And Jelly said Ponto means dot, bus stop, place, score, stitches. It means a shitload of stuff. Although we do have proper words for these other things. Like dot we could call it also a um that's the one I think we would more properly call it a ponto. But a bus stop, you can also call it a um, parada de ônibus. Uh, place, place. You can also call it a, a lugar. Score, you can call pontuação ou placar. Stitches, we can also call sutura. There are other proper words, but. The most common word for these things is ponto, so that confuses the shit out of someone who is not used to that. <clears throat> because you said for some reason you dreamed in this nap and you, I were drawing in your professor's office and that is the only thing you remember. So maybe, maybe just maybe you're getting too used to this whole streaming thing. But uh, hopefully it wasn't a bad dream. Hopefully. I hope you had fun. Sorry for that. Uh, Leo, you said Pinto can mean small, fast, a car, a horse. That in... That in English, do you mean? And Echo, you said that I am your pro professor. Wow. 
Chandler says that I'm a professor. Boy, confirm the Illuminati. Actually, I did already work as a teacher a while ago, so that's that's so me being a professor is canon, just so you guys know. Leo, you also say even a type of fish. And once again, I ask, is it in English or Portuguese or what? Because I don't know. I really don't know. Here it means penis too. It does. And that's that's the that's the the, the weird thing about it. So when you said you it starts by saying pinto means small, I start to get worried. But anyway, um, Kaze, you said you saw him on Twitter today morning. Him what? Uh, Diego, I think they never even sold the car here due to this. Um, possibly. I, I mean, I don't doubt it. Or they did sell the car, but they changed the name. I do know that a lot of, of manufacturers, manufacturers, they do sell the same car under different names in different places for whatever reason. Possibly to make it feel different. Um, and better adjust to the whole country they are selling their car and <clears throat> and Leo you said that it, those words you said were in English or Latin because we all speak Latin here Chandler you said can or canon or homophones to each other canon uh, canon well, possibly they are. Leo will be able to tell you better about that because I sure as hell can't. All I can say is that I'm done with this hand, I think. Maybe just add a little dumping here because you guys, if you're going to draw a hand, you need to make sure you draw the thumbs because hands have thumbs. Even if they don't show up entirely, you should not forget about them. Do the thumbs. <laughs> Something like this should go well. Something eh iffy. And okay, what else are you guys saying? Hmm, Jago said that Pinto is a small fast car. You kind of know about it, but never sold. But it never sold here. Um, I think I also s saw something about it. I don't remember when it was big. If it was 2009, or if it's still a thing, or or isn't. But yeah. Kaze, by him you mean me. Today on Twitter, you mean what? You saw me on Twitter? Was it my face? Was it my tweets? Was it my my complaints? Because I am known for complaining quite a lot, I'm ranting. So now I worry. Because next thing you know, I'll be giving you nightmares. Yeah. Okay, I think the fingers look okay-ish now. They look like they're folded, kind of naturally. Over oh, here's the body. One thing I don't like is that he's kind of tilted to the left. So I'll have to adjust his pose here to take that into account. So his his leg that is on the right of the picture illustration will be straight, and his other leg will be kind of bent, kind of like he's got his knee up and something like this. Although, probably we'll need to increase the size of the brush and adjust a few things because 
like I said, now we are getting to the legs. When, whenever we get to the legs, the puppy dies because drawing legs is awful. I hate it. So let's do our best to keep this as tightly and quickly as possible. Tight, I said tightly, but I didn't say what tightly was, so I meant to say tight. As in, let's keep this whole thing wrapped up and looking okay. Uh, Leo, you said it's a type of homophone, though don't ask me which subtype of homophone. And Diego, when you hear about a car that is named literally pretty much a joke on wheels, you never forget. Oh yeah, makes sense. Leo, you, Leo, you said you're no language arts teacher, just know enough to get into trouble, though, no, though not enough to get back out. Uh, yeah, it does seem like that. I mean, how come somebody knows so much about languages? That's that's something I wonder. Where the languages, you ask, where Leo is from, and you said you love grammar because it helps you learn languages so much. I don't know. I mean, you are learning weird languages, so who knows, maybe it is fun. And Leo, you said you grew up in VT, whatever that is. Do you have been stuck legally in Florida for the last few years? And Chandler says he's sorry there with the long lizard boys. Or the land narf boys. If I'm not wrong, the narf boys are the sharks. That lives in the the sea. However, the land narf boys are the crocodiles, or uh, I think it's crocodiles. I never, I never remember. I think the crocodiles are in the east coast of Florida, and the and the alligators are in the other side of the continent. Um, where was it? Um, where the hell is New Orleans? I forgot. Huh. Well, whatever that place is. If I'm not mistaken, that's where the alligators are. And the crocs are in Florida. Or it's the opposite. Leo, you love spoken languages, though the laws of writing them hurt your head. I get you. Although, for me it's the opposite. Writing a language is so much easier for me than speaking it out. I mean, not easier. It's actually harder, but uh, I've got a lot of practice with writing languages. Not so much practice with speaking languages. Especially because in high school and the such, we did a lot of practical tests pretty often, so... Writing out stuff for, for school was, was, a, was a very big thing, so... So yeah, I, I, I feel comfortable with reading languages. Kind of comfortable. Uh, whoa. Fonzer, you said Pensacola. I don't know. That feels random, but I'll but I'll take your word for it. Whatever that means, thank you. Uh, Chandler said you tell Leo that what you enjoy most about, about grammar is that it gives the it gives the UI of language. Huh. Not colloquial why, of course, because that can only be learned one word at a time, but it gives you a lot of a sense of relief and control when you understand why things are the way why we they are. Giago you said I wanna some of uh, I want some of you to go to the voice chat and say some of our language words like Pindamonyangaba. That's kind of 
that's kind of a, a mean thing to ask. Because, holy shit, that's, a, that's not a nice word to be putting these poor souls on. We can start with smaller words like uh, the city, the neighboring city of where my where I used to live back when I lived in São Paulo, the city of Itaquaque Setubo. But then again, Chandler said, tell Leo that yes, the rules of writing there in other languages is difficult. And it's not in the stream. I'll go in the, into the voice chat so you guys can shame yourselves by speaking all sorts of crazy, crazy words. And there we go. And found there are lots of alligators there in Pensacola. Sure they. And Diego said, I am Guerra. I. Well, that's not. Well, yeah, that's not a complicated one, so that's a good one for starters. Let's try that one. Also, hello to the chat, whoever is on the chat. Hi, I'm here to shame myself. Hooray, welcome to the shaming chamber. <laughs> also, hey, Bones. Uh, apparently, Chandler is gonna shame himself a little bit by speaking some Portuguese words, so I, I really wanna see how that goes. I'm gonna lower the music volume a little bit. The music is a tad too loud. I will increase the volume of the desktop audio that's so you guys can listen the chat better if you are on the stream. I mean, if you are listening just through the stream. Hopefully, the sound mixing is okay and good to go. So, let's get to it. So, Chandler, welcome. You ready to go here too? Also, hey, Diego, welcome to the to the voice chat as well. Hello! <laughs> I'm spooked. So, um, there are many, many, many crazy words in Portuguese that makes no sense, but we just know them. So... <clears throat> um, I did remember seeing a video with Portuguese words that are the craziest and the hardest. But let's start with one I really like. Um, it's um, let me type it out in the disc, in the stream in the the, the, the tweet chat. It is okay. that is hairdresser, but it's spelled <coughs> in Portuguese cabeleireiro. So that's that's the that's the challenge for today. Okay, um, I'll go last. We can start from the bottom with the veto. Come again? Is that I'll go last. We can start with from the bottom with veto, as far as trying to pronounce it. Okay, I don't know if uh, veto is up for the whole getting shamed by trying to speak Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> but why? What's your name? Uh, I thought we were going to chat and whatnot. And <laughs> Commentary. Uh, yeah, you can also skip your turn you, if you have a get out of jail free card. Possibly you can use <laughs> one of those. No, oh, no, but really, if you, if you don't want to, then we can just skip the Chandler because Chandler is the linguist here. He's the one who's trying to learn all sorts of crazy shenanigans in languages and and speak to us in, in Russian and whatnot. So yeah, you can also start learning for some Portuguese. Well, a linguist is a very different person, but I'll try my best. <laughs> Do it. Okay, so, uh, oh, it's oh, okay Cabaleiro. now I feel embarrassed. Cabaleiro. <laughs> <laughs> wow, did it sound bad? It was good. What was it? Caba Cabaleiro? Yeah, it was yeah, actually... Well, that's fair. It was pretty Oof. okay, actually. Get wrecked, yeah. pork and cheese. <laughs> well, let me see how it worked. No, I'm too evil. I, I, I just think on words that's too hard. Uh, there is another word that is very common 
we say quite a lot because um, there are stone paved streets. I don't know what you guys call them. But we call them Ruas de Paralelepipedos. Oh my god. <laughs> so let's try. Excuse me? <laughs> so let's try that I, one. I'm I also. I'm really sorry, I'm really sorry. What a fun word. So I'll put it into the Twitch chat so you can. You get, all, every one of you can look into it and try it at home. It's a work of art. Also, Diego suggested a very easier word that is tetraedo. Maybe you can maybe you can start with that one with that one. So the one before is paralelepipedos. Yeah, almost, almost that. Paralelepipedos. You just messed up the ending, but it's frick it's, me. It's also <laughs> actually the, the ending is actually the easy part, so you did get the messy part pretty well. So try it again. It's paralelepipedo. Oh wait, the S isn't pronounced. Uh, it is. Ah, I, I just didn't, but you can pronounce it. Brifhim, brifout. I feel very accomplished. <laughs> it is a hard word, so congratulations. <laughs> But there are so many, many other words we can kind of just throw in at you, and I just, I just, I just can't even think of a word. There are so many, so many. So do you, do you have an English word that I could try? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Because I don't know, there's many weird English things. I mean, mm -hmm. I have seen around and I've tried to speak them, I got kind of bamboozled. <laughs> so I don't know, there may be some English words you guys can come and try and throw at me yeah, and Jago. Hmm. We do our best. Also, hey okay. Derby Shed, welcome to the stream. Oh, 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 okay. I see him. <laughs> uh, Jago, you suggested the word, the word, Bal Balburgia. 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 I never heard that one, actually, to, to be honest. We finally use it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a very fancy way. It's so fancy that I don't use it. But it is a word. <laughs> Um. Hmm. Okay, I got one. He's in the chat. Oh, whoa. Okay, that one sounds crazy. Uh, first of all, it, it is mm, it with kind of. only E's? There is no A in there? I thought it would be an A. There's an A at the end. Hey, nice things. I think it is. I think it's Renaissance. Actually. Oh, very nice, Doug. Yeah, Renaissance. But I cheated because I have already seen people say this word before. Yeah, you've, you've seen... Your, your vocabulary is phenomenal. I'm surprised every time I come to the street. <laughs> well, thank you. But yeah, I have seen people say this word before because apparently there is a thing called Renaissance Fair. Yes. So, yeah, I heard stories about that. But um, it's still that's the only that's the only place I actually see that word. So it's kind of weird. So let us find a word for you now. In the meantime, let's see what the, the lovely people in the chat are saying. Uh, Dobie, you sadly just finished up lunch, though. Then I think you are going to go back to your new job. But that's fine. Leo, you said cabellere, meaning wiggle or wick. An eiro means seller or coin, so it's a seller of wicks. 
a uh, cabeleireiro. That's interesting. Not so far from what it actually is. Yeah, actually it's pretty far. True. Um, I, I used to sell some wigs. Depends on which one you go. Yeah, true. Actually, if you go to a hairdresser, they will cut your hair and it will be on the floor. And if somebody picks it up, they can sell it later. So, that kind of works. <laughs> <laughs> But then again, Kaza, you said, think of words about society. They, they're always hard. And uh, Terry, you know the only day where you can't voice call for all day. I mean, we'll be here again in the future um, many more times, so don't worry. There will be a day in which you can join us. But for now, well, I start working next week, so I'll not be joining anymore, unfortunately. Oh, you, did, you got the job. No, I always had. Uh, I'm on vacation. So. Oh, frick, who am I thinking of then? Terry. <laughs> Was it Terry? Yeah, yeah Terry. Was he was, Terry, he was looking to getting a job. Yeah. And you, Diego, you said you were on vacations up until mid February? Yes. I don't remember which day exactly. Uh, we'll return in the next Monday. Uh, oh, just one more week then. What, yes. about, what about Carnival? I don't know. I don't know. I do remember one day when I used to work as a teacher, I had to work during Carnival. Like it was on a... it was a f Tuesday and a Friday, but this Saturday I had to go to work. So that was sad. And Dobie, gotta get going sadly, I'll see you guys later. And sure thing Dobie, thanks for stopping by and you're always welcome. Come and join us. So, I think I have a word. It's common. It's very common and it's very like your guys' version of the word. But I think it'll kind of bamboozle your mind a little bit. <laughs> <coughs> so, you guys have airport, right? Yeah. Yes. I mean, of course you do. But now, maybe you guys can try and get into the Portuguese version, which is Aeroporto. Did you just say airport? <laughs> no. No. Similar. There is a little Aeroporto. difference. Let me write it up for you guys. Aeroport. Oh. Aeroporto? Kinda. Aero? You, you have to really pronounce the A. You have to say Aeroporto. Oh, Aeroporto. Yeah, something like that. Oh. Okay, interesting. Because the thing about about English that I see is you guys don't really pronounce the R's so much when there's uh, there's other letters around. Or you guys don't pronounce the letters around the R's so much. So that so so that can be a little confusing because in Portuguese we do speaks. Uh, these vowels pretty hard pretty, pretty loudly sometimes so you can't really which, kind of say silent E's or I's or whatever which is nice when you're learning languages like Portuguese and Spanish which I appreciated the same thing about Spanish because um, the, dip song, the diphthongs and chipthongs are very easy to pronounce because they're always the same whereas in English they just get skipped completely sometimes, like you said, Doug. Mm -hmm. So now, it's, I want to see you guys try the word Diego said before. That one is a, it's a tongue twister. Let me... I wrote... What was it again? Tetraedro? What? Tetraedro. Oh yeah, there's a lot of R's in there. Tetraedro, so. or is it tetraedor? The first, 
The Tetra second time was was okay. Is tetraedro? Odro. Tetraedro. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty good, actually. Oof. <laughs> it's a ten-faced cube. Yeah, like a. Does what's that? What's the word in English? I think you it's tetra tetrahedron or something. Yeah. There you go. But now I want to see you guys try this one word that uh, that uh, Diego suggested a little while ago. But before, Terry, you said maybe you didn't see, but you're having your trial day Thursday, so Thursday we will keep everyone up to date. And please do. I really want to see if you get if you get the job or not. But I mean, at this point we all were we we're all hoping that you did. So good luck with that. The Fonzer, he says that he'd nailed that word. And uh, yes, those are the words. Thank you, Diego, for getting them. Uh, first of all, I want to see you guys trying out the first one, which is Anyanguera. Anyanguera. So it's. Anyanguera? Anyanguera? Uh, kind of. Uh, in English, we only use the nose to pronounce some words. We use a lot in Portuguese. Oh, so you use this, this kind of word is too hard for English people. Anyanguera. Anyanguera. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Perfect. Anyanguera. The same goes for the second word. Oh, see what you mean. So you have nasal. to pronounce using your nose half the word. Yeah, so Bindamon Gun. Wait, Bindamon. Uh, Gava? <laughs> yeah, I think the. Uh, almost! Let almost. me say it. Bindamon Gaba. Monion. So Bindamon Gaba? Yeah. Mm, so, yes. It has a little bounce to it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> And um, yes, Fonzer, the H in these words are silent. I don't think you guys have in English any word that is uh, that are like N H or L H. Uh, An L H. Yeah, we have some words in with L H. I don't, I don't remember any one right now. I uh, know you. I know one. Talia. Ah, yeah, Talia. Uh, something like this. yeah, Talia to me. Uh, this this L H we we they are not, they are not silent they are part of the the sound. I see. If you get if you if you have dabbled a little bit in Spanish the ña in Ayanguera is the same thing as the n with a tiled that they have in Spanish. Yeah, the n yes. I don't I don't know if that's the the name of the accent. Tiled? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's called an enye in Spanish. Aha. Uh -huh. So yeah, so we have the same words, but instead of using the n tiled, we have the nh. Oh, so that that one is uh, panda. Come again? So that one, that one, the last one that Diego said, that's yeah. Uh, actually, no, because that's with a, with an l, not an n. So say palia. Palia. Yeah. Almost like you say llama. The... So, is there an N sound in there somewhere? No, not at all. Okay. So palia. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Palia. <clears throat> <laughs> and um, I think it's the same sound that the Spanish have with double L's. Yes, it is. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. I know another. You know already half the word. <laughs> it means joker. Or clown. Oh, Palyaso? Mm, Palyaso? Kinda. Yeah, it's kind of that. You kind of, the LH, want to give it a little more emphasis, so you say Palyaso. Palyaso. Mm, you, you kind of drag in the word, the, the letter, it's Palya. Go a little overboard with the LH, so you, so you stop when you say the pa, and then you start the LH. So you go pa yaso, pa yaso. 
Yeah, something like that. Mm. The the biggest issue is, especially with English, is that you ha a, you normally drag the sound from one syllable to the other, but yeah. it does it doesn't happen with this one. Kaza, you said you will voice chat in maybe one hour and thirty minutes. That's a very specific amount of time. And I don't know if you will still be here, but sure thing. Leo said a conjoined AE used to be a letter in both Old English and American English. I thought it, though both have dropped it. And yeah, I do know that. Um, I don't remember what was it though. Okay, wow. since we are talking about pronunciation, I have an issue. Issue. Uh, which is. Let me write. I pronounce both uh, basically the same, in the same way. Oh. Is it right? No, not at all. So uh, here is simple. I don't know. This is a this is a very common problem. So tree is the first one, as in the plant. It's a tree. Yes. And then for the number, it's three. Three. Yep. Oh. You just you just need to make sure that th is in there. That th sound. Oh, okay. So the tree, three. as in the number, has a little s sound to it. No, it's more of a th. You know how you say the word the 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 that sound. <laughs> <laughs> So, three. so say three between kisses. So go like three. Your, your tongue goes between your teeth. Three. How weird. Three, three, three and three. You know what? You, you know what's more weird? What yeah. is? In the Latin language, instead of pronouncing Latin word words in the language itself, in a V, it's a it sounds like a W. Oof, my favorite. <laughs> In Spanish, they don't have the word V. They say B. Yeah, it's just a glorified B. <laughs> yes. Is that so? I didn't know that. Like, for instance, my persona's first name is Vidas. But if, if you use a Latin sentence instead of Vidas, it's pronounced Vidas. Huh. You know, that reminds me, I took a Latin class in high school, um, and there's a kid named Victor, and everyone called him Victor. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> That's <laughs> terrible! <laughs> I just remember okay. that. That's funny. I was also in a chat, instead of saying my name Diego, someone say Daigo. Oh! Wow, I literally that... went Japanese. <laughs> that's, that's... That's very off. Bear, bear, and beer, says Taz Bingo. Well, the first two sound exactly the same, you're right. You just need context to figure out which one they're talking about. And then beer is beer. Bear, bear, and beer. Yeah, though, those are also very... Quick, <laughs> much, go, die, go. <laughs> Join the words. Oh, no. Words to live by. <laughs> <laughs> what's it. more dif what's more difficult is the tenses of the Latin words try aim to find out about the past present tenses based on the spelling of the Latin words I thought I thought Latin was more complex in its declensions rather than conjugations am I wrong something like that okay I just remember not having a good time in that class. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. Oof. I mean, I, I don't. I don't even know anybody in here who studies for whatever reason Latin. I, I don't even know where you would go if you wanted to learn. Same Latin here. here. I've never heard of any. It was. Study. It was. It was a choice of foreign language I had to take during my English major years. It's a requ it's a requirement to choose one foreign language for four semesters. I chose Latin. Mm. 
don't you know, know what that makes a lot of sense. It doesn't sound like the most useful language to go learning for a few semesters. I think that for English speakers, I think it would be quite useful, actually, if you want to go the linguistic route anyway, to see how and where English words have formed. Yeah, it makes sense. Fonzer said he would chose Mandarin, or Chinese, I think. Oof. One of those two. Rest in spaghetti, never forgetty. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, I had to get that out of the way. Oh, and it's it's more easy learning the language outside of college than it is inside of it. Oh, preach! I'm learning more likes... English playing games than studying in the school. <laughs> mm. A veto or Wido or veto. Put that on a T-shirt for me. <laughs> uh, but but how come? I mean, I mean, don't they have? Many proper resources in colleges for teaching, for trying to teach Latin or anything? Or they're like, yeah, fuck it, just read a little, a lot of books and, and hope you get better at it. How do they go about it? It's mostly about learning the languages from tenses to pronunciations to translations, etc. The, la the latest Latin in classes I took was when it involved the Aeneid, written by Vir Populus Virgilius Mero. Virgil for short. So basically it's just grammar. More grammar, more grammar. More or less. Your, yeah, your listening, reading, and writing skills are greatly improved via school, but the speaking is not <laughs> and or even your understanding of the language because right now i'm taking a break from school and i still have all my language textbooks so i study um every other day if not every day and i get to study what i want that helps tremendously hmm. it's it was still a requirement for the english major yeah you know you, you bring that up because um uh, i've tutored a few people for like Spanish and Russian, they were English majors because of the same thing, Vito, you know, they had that requirement, and I'm like, so why Russian or whatever? Then again, some co colleges have different rules, so for instance, ECU, East Carolina University, four semesters of foreign language in the English major. Mm -hmm. Same over here, yeah. I, although, uh, from what I know, if you go about getting a degree in languages, and here they don't call it an English major, we call it a letters major for whatever reason, you do get to learn Portuguese and all the crazy forms of it and everything, but you also have to choose a foreign language to, to learn as, as well, but, uh, but like the whole degree is revolved around Portuguese literature and this other language so you have to take out another language for the whole course and most people here yeah, can do that for Spanish and today I just can read I can't pronounce a single word so yeah people here just take it for English or Spanish nobody takes for anything else I had French too oh French that's a good one actually to try and take but, uh, French is harder, a lot harder for me. <laughs> we. No, that's it for me. <laughs> uh, Leo. Says, oh no no! Oh, he said we frick me. <laughs> uh, Leo, you said I never had to take a foreign or that language in high school. I missed the year that they put that into your school this by one year. Lucky you, I get, I think. But um, yeah, yeah, that's that sounds crazy. The whole way they go about it. <coughs> uh, since I took a system analysis my graduation, I would learn another languages, but they are programming languages, so I think that's why they didn't yeah. bother much. <laughs> With actual languages. So you're learning. 
what uh, what programming language are, are you trying to learn now? None. <laughs> Actually, none. Huh. I don't make use of programming now. But at the college I had to learn a few. Delphi is all basic. I don't remember now. There was four, I think. Ooh. I learned C++ mostly. C++, yeah, isn't I'll that older? Bit. It's also the most versatile language, that's why most people start with that. Hmm. Oh, very C, very C++ and C++. It's already the latest, it's not so old. Hmm. It gets updated quite frequently, yeah. Oh, that's good, uh, eh? If you add another plus, it became C sharp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm teaching myself C sharp right now. Thankfully, it's not too different. No, it's C sharp and Java. It's pretty much the same. Yeah. So, Chandler, why, are, why, in the world, are you trying to learn programming languages? Um, it was my major for a short while until um, life really sucked like really badly and so I just switched to animation and so I'm trying to get into the animation program here at my school. How uh, come, Fonzer? Uh, Fonzer, you said you, you, were, you were forced to learn French. Why did that happen? Did Napoleon invade the, 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 <laughs> the, United, the east side of the United States again or what happened? <laughs> well, because I mean... Idiot. He'd be around two centuries late to do that. Better late than never, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what, did he just suddenly come back from the dead or something and haunt us in our sleep? Yeah, man. Get on our level. Oh, I mean, he's <laughs> definitely learning something from the Spanish. They, if you don't expect the Spanish Inquisition, you definitely will not expect Napoleon to come back. <laughs> but why, why, Fonzer? To let us know and let us regale in your tale of how you oh, were forced Canada to learn. Oh, Canada uses French. Yep, Canadian. Uh, oh. I would explain it. oh, that's right. Canada as two official languages are English and French. Ah, that makes sense. It really does. So it wasn't an invasion after all. <laughs> no invasion. <laughs> That's <laughs> unfortunate. So, I mean... Touché. Well, oh. Well, that makes a lot of sense, actually. The province of Quebec requires you to learn French to primary and secondary education. However, oh. or there is no however, do let us know, Fonzie. Your tale is too interesting, don't, don't, don't stop now. Don't stop. Don't stop. <laughs> I'm having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think it nobody here has ever gone out of the country to learn languages in other places. I mean, you did Chandler, right? Go to well, yeah, I, I left the country, but not to learn languages. I was seven when I moved to Japan, lived there for right about back. five years. <laughs> so... Try to, try to get enrolled in Japanese classes, but they're always filled up for some reason, so... The only... The only... The only out-of-country places I've been to was in Europe. Oh. Oof. That's all Where in Europe? Like fun. 